What is up guys? How's it going? My name is Aram Joseph. Thank you for checking out the video. So in today's video, my car is completely full of Windows desktop computers, give or take about 20 desktop computers. And what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and open a side panel of each desktop computer. We're going to go ahead and check whether it's an i-series board or if it's a core to duo or older board. In part two, we're going to diagnose each one of these i-series desktop computers. And we're going to see what it needs, what it doesn't need. And from there, you'll see how I refurbish some of these computers and what kind of comes out of it, how I'm able to save, refurbish, kind of reuse what is meant to be scrapped out or recycled. So whatever is actually extra is recycled, but whatever can be used is reused. So that's what's gonna happen today. We're gonna go through all those computers and we're gonna set them up to two piles. One of them is gonna be what's scrapped and one of them is gonna be what is refurbished and reused. With that being said, let's get started. Okay, so let's go ahead and check out my car. All of these computers that are on the bottom level have to be determined as to whether they are to be scrapped or whether they are to be kept and refurbished. I was trying to have a smooth transition. That's a fourth or fifth gen high five. That's the point I'm making is that like something like this would be kept and refurbished, it would be diagnosed to see what's wrong with it, and then I would do the recording work, see if I can save it. And something like this, right? It looks old, right? But we don't know because it just could be an older tower, like as far as uh, the case, but the internals could be newer. So one by one, we're just gonna be going through it, right? We're gonna, we're gonna open it up really quickly from the back. it without making this thing drop one hand while holding the camera okay so we'll just look at the back com the rear components the IO right if we don't understand anything from it which is what I'm understanding right now because even though these are PC2 uh, slots sometimes there are like boards that have PC2 slots but have DDR3 RAM or whatnot so I'm gonna go ahead and grab my screwdriver and then we'll start opening up the side panels, seeing what we're working with. On second thought, I'm just gonna go ahead and take them into the warehouse because it's gonna be a little bit difficult checking them out while they're in the trunk of my car. So I'm gonna bring them inside and then one by one I'll stack them next to each other and one by one we'll go ahead and check the side panels. So let's go ahead and do that. So I couldn't get all of the towers in the frame because unfortunately there is no space in the warehouse towards the front of the door. Basically to give you an idea, what you're seeing right here, this, is, this would be the third level. The other two levels are vertical, this is horizontal. So basically 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. So there are 25 desktop towers and there is a server, it's an HP server, I think it's a ProLiant server. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put each tower over here and I'm going to show you what I look at to determine if I'm going to refurbish it or if I'm just going to scrap it out for its individual like material value. So let's just start off with the first one. So this is an Dell Optiplex 3040, it's a Intel Core i3. So it doesn't say the generation on it, which means that this is a sixth generation i3. So this is gonna be refurbished, right? If I can quickly put this clip back on, you may be able to go through this relatively quickly. This is gonna be refurbished, right? Put that on the side. Next would be another small form factor PC. So these came with uh, this front plastic piece, right? This front IO. Um, as you can see, it is broken. One of the pieces just on the verge of breaking broke in my hand. But um, this is a 7th gen i5. So um, with these computers, I don't know what's wrong with them. 
So uh, all because they're a good processor doesn't mean um, that they're going to work 100%, of course. But um, this is part of the initial margin call. I go ahead and I see you know, what I can do and um, you know, from there I make the according decisions. Oh, okay, actually this is not for this. This has like five ports and then an audio jack as well. So let's actually see what's inside because that's not the front I.O. There is an SSD here, right? Um, I can just tell the way it looks, it's pretty obvious. But there is no RAM. There's no RAM, but um, I'm pretty sure that this is one of the nicer uh, computers. So I'm gonna spend my time um, fixing it. Therefore, uh, this will be put on the side. All right, so that one we're gonna set aside to refurbish. So I'll make the part two going through all of these. Actually like the, the, the refurbishing portion of it. So we have this extra front audio. Let's go ahead and go through this one. So, okay. So this one looks like the IO for that, for the prior one. And it says seventh gen i7. So um, there you have it. This is, that's another uh, decent computer, pretty decent computer that um, we don't know if it's working or not. I'm gonna have to go ahead and test it. But um, regardless, as I said, that's part of the margin call. I go ahead and I decide if I'm going to uh, keep it and refurbish it or not. So this one is missing RAM, has leaves inside, has a CD drive, no hard drive. So this must be what the other front IO was, was uh, pointing to, which is a this. 7th gen i5. So this 7th gen i5, the prior one is a 7th gen i7. So once again, this is going to be kept. So here's another thing that's a perfect example of uh, certain things I have to deal with when refurbishing computers. Most of the time, um, they are relatively in good cosmetic condition as far as like aesthetically how they look outside. But the repairs begin on the motherboard or, or on the component level. So that's the typical situation. And then there are other situations such as this where the metal may be bent out of shape and uh, just the structure needs adjusting. So all of this goes into uh, the time I spent, whether it's worth it or not. And if it isn't, like let's say a situation like this where it isn't worth my time to go ahead and kind of play around with the structure until I get a good fit where I can put the IO back on, I can put the side panel back on without it being odd or weird when I, I'm not able to be efficient I just go ahead and I just take the parts I take the parts that have no function like if the CPU works I'll take the CPU if the power supply ends up turning on the machine then I'll take the power supply and so on and so forth so next we'll start with the, the full-size towers so first thing I do is I just look at the rear IO I check out the ports I check out like if it's a USB 2.0 or 3.0 I check out if it's a P, PC2 I'm sorry uh, it's a it's a PS2 uh, no it's a PC2 it's late I'm sorry I'm not playing PlayStation <laughs> anyway so this one has USB 3.0 we're gonna go ahead open it up so this one you see the heatsink and the way that Intel sticker is sitting on the heatsink. The first thing I notice is that, and why I notice that is um, typically these CPUs are uh, aligned with certain type of stickers as far as these CPUs, what I mean is like first generation, second generation, third generation of the Intel processors, the i-series. They come with these heatsinks and prior to any of those processors, the sticker on the heatsink looks different. So I just look for quick 
signs to be efficient as far as okay if I look at the sticker and it's it's one of the older generation stickers and if I look at the board and it's a DDR2 and if I look at other components and I see like even some of the capacitors are older capacitors that the newer boards do not have I quickly make that call and I just designate it accordingly otherwise I do not have time to one by one go ahead and open them up so with this one we're gonna keep it right we already saw USB 3.0 and it's a DDR3, so this is kept. This one, you can already tell, it's old. It says Windows XP, Celeron. So this one automatically goes. Here's the next one, same thing. We check out the IO, this one doesn't have USB 3.0s, but it has the HDMI. So once again, it's a sign that it's a newer board. Sometimes there are boards that are that have HDMI ports on them, but there's like DDR2, they're higher end DDR2 boards, but you know, like this is a good example of the sticker. I'm not sure if you guys can tell. See how that one was blue and silver? See, this one is white and silver. It already tells me that this is an older one, right? But we have an HDMI. So that, that one throws me off a little bit. But once again, there are boards. You know, they have HDMI, but are older. Then we look at the RAM. So all of these are DDR2, but this is 2 gigabyte DDR2. These are nicer RAM, so these will be kept on the side. But just for the sake of it, we're gonna go ahead and take off this heatsink, and we're gonna see what processor is inside. Another sign that it's an older uh, CPU is by looking at the bracket. When this lever is pointing out like a U, it's an older bracket. So this one says Pentium. So I was right, it is an older one, even though it has the HDMI. It's like HDMI port in the back. So this one goes inside. So that one goes and it like a per pound. This one does not have an HDMI. It has older ports. You know, it's, it's a little bit harder to tell whether it uh, has anything uh, recent as far as DR3 or newer. So we go ahead and we check. We get this side. Fair enough. You see the sticker is blue and silver. This is a newer one. Now we go ahead and check the RAM. The RAM is DDR3, 4 gigabytes, and there are two. So there are 8 gigabytes DDR3 in here. So this one is kept. And that's generally the process. I wanted to give you guys an idea of uh, what I do as far as how I designate these computers, how I make those calls. Here, let's do another one. So this, this is an interesting example, right? So this says Core 2 Duo, but the sticker is an uh, Intel sticker that they use primarily for first generation i-series processors. So the Core 2 Duo was, did also use this same sticker, but it was only during this specific time period after this, there were different stickers that were used. A second thing to also look at is that there's a Windows 7 Pro product key. So why I look at that is that even though this is a Core 2 Duo, and typically Core 2 Duos have older stickers, a Windows 7 was not uh, associated with Core 2 Duo computers or lower, at least at this generation. So what that means basically, long story short, is that this was probably an older system that was sold to an office, but Dell had a specific line of, I guess, office computers. So they would still use these, but these are like upgraded versions of the original. Well, in Tibet, this is a DDR3. And sure enough, if that focuses onto it, PC3. So this is a DDR3. So uh, case in point, it's not uh, so black and white. You know, there are exceptions here and there. So in this specific situation, I'm going to have to decide whether I'm going to scrap this out or sell it for its value because I don't know offices may still need motherboards like this, like the IT department. If uh, their internal, one of their internal computers goes bad, they may be looking for parts and etc. So this one we're going to be putting on the side for now until I do a little bit of research on it and I see if this is gonna be of any use. All right, so I'm gonna continue going through this and I'll show you at the end 
what came out of it. So I just finished going through all 25 desktop computers. Five of them ended up being DDR2 computers. So they are going to be scrapped out, sold per pound. And those are inside this pallet right here. The other 20 desktop computers, some of them are apparent that they are newer. All right, it doesn't want to do it. Anyway, this is a 6th gen i7, and this, this is an example of some of the computers that were in this pile. Now, this is not to say that it functions. I have not tested its functionality. I am only looking at the hardware. I'm only looking at whether it is a valuable component that's inside or the whole thing is valuable or the whole thing can be used. And from there, now that I've separated them into two different piles, part two of this video, this was just a short video showing you guys how I go ahead and make that margin call, how I designate the different desktop computers into their own specific areas, how I decide whether to work on them, refurbish them, part them out, sell them per pieces or sell them per pound like how these are. So long story short, these are the computers that I decided I have to look into further. Now, part two, I'm going to go ahead and connect these each to power as well as connect them to a monitor. That way you guys can see what I'm seeing. And if they end up being functioning pieces, I will go ahead and I will decide whether I'm going to part them out and sell them individually, or I will keep them as whole functioning pieces. For example, something like this. Who calls after hours? Anyway, what I was saying was pieces such as this, right? This is a Dell XPS, right? This is like one of those studio desktop towers. So something like this, it's already in a nice case. It's in a nice tower and the motherboard is proprietary to, I mean, I don't know if it's proprietary, but the motherboard is for this model and maybe other models that are similar chassis to this. But long story short, it is something that was specific to this type. You know, you even look at the rear setup, the IO and everything. So something like this, if it ends up functioning 100%, or if there's something minor, like I have to replace the RAM, I have to put new hard drives in all of these anyway. That's just my understanding with my client that I pick up computers from. There's a data security, so I go ahead and I put new hard drives anyway. So outside of a new hard drive and outside of one or two co minor components like RAM or a power supply, that's faulty components here and there that are relatively minor I would be selling this as a whole piece otherwise for the rest such as units as this right where you can tell that dust has got the best of it or there are other units where there was dust as well as humidity and some of these vents have um, rusted out and what I would do in those specific situations is that I would go ahead and save the board i would scrap out the motherboard from inside and i'll scrap out the power supply from there the case would be sold per piece as far as like its weight per pound that is the two different sub branches of refurbishing is refurbishing and keeping them as whole pieces or refurbishing them by salvaging whatever piece is valuable and can be used again and extracting that out of these units and leaving the rest to be recycled per pound per its material value. So that's it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, I would highly recommend you subscribe to my channel. I make videos like this. I make videos that are all about e-waste recycling. that are about refurbishing. And before I ever opened up this business, I was buying and selling Apple computers I was buying them off of Craigslist and refurbishing them and selling them. So you're gonna start seeing a lot of videos like that too where I'm getting pieces that are either vintage or they're newer but they're broken and I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to refurbish them and I'm gonna show you guys the process from what it was to what it can be and what it will be. If that type of stuff interests you, I would highly recommend you subscribe to the channel. I would really appreciate it and I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope it was insightful and um, yeah, and, 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 and keep a lookout for part two. Till then, guys. See you later.